Thank you, Dr. Bukraj, for inviting me for this uh, IC. And uh, this is unique in which we discuss all the pediatric uh, retinal disorders. And to begin with, of course, uh, retinopathy of prematurity. Why we have said, decided to say that it's not a child's play, it's probably because the most important reason that uh, it's not advancing. For two reasons, that the magnitude of disease as well as uh, the complexity of disease and that is why we need, uh, it's not very simple. Yeah. So the magnitude of the problem we can understand by the presence of almost 35 lakh premature babies annually in India. And if each baby were to have a, at least three examinations, we will have, need to do three lakh examinations annually before we declare these babies at no risk for retinopathy of prematurity. So the economic burden for such a, a huge problem is very difficult to handle. So I'll just present some scenarios and treatment options which are available with us to describe that each case can be different. So where in the early stages of the disease like immature retina and uh, stage one or disease, we can watch the patient and just do a follow up two weekly. This may not be possible once you have a stage three disease which is present with uh, frank and obvious new vessels which are present here on the ridge and this kind of a treatment, uh, I may need treatment within 24 to 48 hours. And if there is plus disease present, this can change the scenario very rapidly and you may result in something called the APROP which needs treatment absolutely immediately, it's like an emergency. And the treatment which most often works and most often we like to use is laser photocoagulation. It works in almost 90 to 95% of cases if it is timely done. But the zone one is a different scenario where you may miss the disease altogether because the typical ridge may not be present. And here, simple laser photocoagulation may not do the job. Here you can see there's a persisting NVE in spite of a lot of laser which has been done. And Avastin or anti vegf comes to the rescue here. This is another patient. You can see large area of avascular retina is present and uh, immediate treatment is necessary. Well, earlier what we used to do was a lot of laser and sometimes if required even posterior laser to the ridge or ending up sometimes in as bad a laser as this which was before the anti vegf era. But now with the presence of anti vegf in diseases we can see that hardly anything is developed here. The development of vascularization stops very close to the disc. Large areas of avascular retina are present. What we do is we do a combination therapy where we do laser to the periphery. This large area of avascular retina is left untreated and we give simultaneous um, anti vegf which is preferably bevacizumab in our cases. And this allow the, the follow up the child for the full development of retinal vascularization. But once you have the stage four and stage five disease, surgical treatment is the answer. In stage four diseases, you can do something, the lens sparing vitrectomy, which is when we make our sclerotomy is about 0.7 to one millimeter and avoiding the clock hour where there is retinal detachment. The main aim of surgery is to remove these traction bands which are causing the pull and once you do that, the retina settles down very well. But sometimes it may not be as easy as you saw in the previous case. In this case, though we are doing a lens sparing vitrectomy, extensive fibrovascular proliferation has happened. I'm using a bimanual technique to remove all these membranes while using chandelier illumination. Once this is another scenario where this is a 4A disease, the macula is not det uh, detached, but this also needs surgical intervention because we know from our experience 4A is not really a stable configuration and this disease can progress. So this needs intervention and the aim of therapy, as I said, of treatment is to remove this bridging tissue which forms between lens to the retina, retina to ridge and or ridge to the periphery. So once this is done, the results can be better without any iatrogenic retinal break formation. Another scenario is this is a slightly older child. Patient has come to us for, at two months. Most likely the baby started with something like a zone two disease but left untreated. So you can see a broad fibrous tissue which is formed in the periphery. No previous treatment has been done. So in this case, we decided to a peripheral bell buckle and the anterior retina which was detached. We did cryophotocoagulation to that and gave intravitreal avastin as well and then followed by bell buckle removal at one year of age and the child did well. 
Another scenario is that of falciform folds. Most often of us, we believe that they, they can be left alone, but sometimes when you see these falciform folds at two months or three months, they may not necessarily be a stable disease, and if the disease or the falciform fold is seen to progress, you may have to resort to surgery to dissect off all the tissue over the falciform fold, free it anteriorly from the retina, so that the retina falls back and does not drag more and more retina into it, and sometimes increasing retrolental fibroplasia causing again stage 5 disease. So this is the outcome of this child that at least some area of retina was left for the patient to have some ambulatory vision. And this is a typical stage 5 disease where a lot of retrolental fibroplasia has formed. And we have seen from experience that patients who come with corneal opacity, ectropion UV or posterior synechy and flat AC, they generally don't do too well. But this you can see is a well dilated pupil. So I have divided the RLF into four quadrants and carefully dissecting each and every quadrant to reflect most of the RLF and uh, expose the retina below. And sometimes this results in good uh, results and though not more than 13 to 40 percent but some useful ambulatory vision and some children do well. I would like to share you with you uh, something like I had operated two twins, two babies who were twins and uh, how different each case can be. Both of them came to me with stage 5 disease. Externally both of them look similar. Both of them underwent a similar surgery for stage 5 removal of fibrous tissue done in both eyes. You can see after the removal of fibrous tissue, I don't see any folds of retina, only flat tissue here. Here after removal of fibrous tissue, I can see these folds are exposed and there's a lot of underlying retina available. This is probably a combined retinal detachment to begin with. Here there was no evidence of regma. So that is why this child actually did well and there was retinal uh, reattachment. Again, uh, how long will you follow up? Most of the cases, if you have done laser, you can limit your follow up, but in cases where um, only Avastin has been given, the follow up has to be longer. Otherwise, this is how it can come to you with extensive proliferation, large posterior pole breaks where you can't salvage the eyes at all. So, a lot of advantage of combined treatment that you can save the posterior field of the patient, but long term follow up is necessary not only for post avastin eyes, but even otherwise, this is an example of a case of retinal detachment in a previously regressed ROP. This is an older 10 year old child with a lot of uh, posterior pole breaks, including macular hole, and patient has developed RD needing surgery again. So, long term follow up is necessary. Another typical or scenario which I would like to discuss that sometimes this was a 32 weeker, not a very uh, low birth weight baby also, but he came to us with the exudative detachment and the underlying cause was a stormy neonatal period and we had to manage the child with a combination of laser and intravitreal bevacizumab. So it is important to know these risk factors. Similar thing for PHPV, it again is a complex disease. Most of the times we have something called the anterior and posterior PHPV. I will talk mostly, mostly on the posterior one. Just an example that sometimes these cases do well once you have removed most of the cataract and the pupil is dilated. Once you remove the tissue, they do well. This again, two cases presenting together and both of them are looking similar. In one eye, when you remove the, I removed the fibrous tissue, the eye has done very well because the posterior pole, the retina was well developed. In the other eye, the retina was totally dysplastic. So just by the presence of retrodental fibroplasia, you should not just leave off these eyes. Some of them can actually do extremely well. You see this, this patient, once this tissue is removed, the underlying retina is very good. Here you can see the underlying retina is totally dysplastic and this child does not gain any useful vision. In contrast, this baby, everything is good, only this small pedicle is there. Sometimes it is different to differentiate whether it is PHPV or ROP. This was looking like PHPV, but actually when we went inside, it looked more of a tractional detachment because of retinopathy of prematurity.